Hey, it's the end of the year, and as, as a way to celebrate, I wanted to bring the top 10 episodes of all time back up, and today in our countdown, we're going to hear number four of all time. It was originally episode number 108 that was released in March of 2021 with Tim Kelly and Jordan Grigg. You know, both are, you know, um, were, were at one point active duty military. And one thing interesting about this one is as far as episode popularity, it was kind of a sleeper. It uh, had an average amount of downloads when it first came out, you know, it wasn't, uh, wasn't topping the charts immediately. But this is one that over time has just kept on getting downloads and downloads and downloads. And um, right now, like I said, it is number four out of all the episodes. So hope you enjoy it. Welcome to the Diary of Apartment Investor podcast. I'm your host, Brian Briscoe. We've got two amazing guests on the line today as one of our Ask the Expert episodes. Uh, we got Tim Kelly and we have Jordan Grigg on the line. So first, you know, Tim is a real estate investor and educator, best-selling author, speaker, and recently separated from the United States Navy as a chief petty officer. Tim is now a senior managing partner of both Kelly Housing Group and ADPI Capital, where he and his partners invest and syndicate multifamily property in the affordable and workforce housing spaces with a focus on apartment communities, mobile home parks, and storage facilities. So that said, Tim, welcome to the show. Ryan, appreciate you, man. Yeah. Long time coming. Let's have a fun conversation and look forward to diving into Jordan's Jordan's uh, journey here. Let's do this. I know. I mean, this is this is long overdue. Um, when I when I first started the podcast, I made a short list of names, and your name was on it. And I thought, okay, we got Veterans Day coming up. I'm going to have like you know one episode a day on Veterans Day. So I so I pushed you and a couple other guys to the side, thinking we'll come up with Veterans Day. But uh, anyway, changed my changed my mind on that Veterans Day thing, and uh, so. Apologize for the delay, but we finally got you, and and that's yeah. I think what's important. But uh, um, what I'd like to talk about first is is ADPI, active duty passive income. It, it's something that I've gotten a lot of value, you know. And I know I think you're one of the, the founding members, right? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, ADPI. You know, education is at our core, and mm -hmm. and what we do, we are we are educating and inspiring, guiding, coaching, mentoring veterans and active duty members, whether you're a spouse, family member, um, military affiliate at all, we're just helping them experience and work through their wealth building journey through mostly investing in real estate. Uh, and that starts with the financial education that we, mm -hmm. none of us get and, you know, going through school and, right. and in, in the, in, in our, right in our society. So the financial foundation stuff, the credit stuff, that's all, all free, free resources. We have a best selling book that's free. Mm -hmm. And then we have like a residential track of a, an academy and a mastermind for residential single family and, and turnkey and stuff like that. And then we have a commercial and multifamily track, which has an academy and a very mm -hmm. robust mastermind. And, and then, like I said, education is at our core. We have that very much thriving and growing. And then we, we were listening to our community because it's, you know, almost 20,000 members in our Facebook group and mm -hmm. like, it's just rapidly growing, but they needed financial services like mortgage and yep. insurance. And they needed to be connected with, with agents that were actually understood the, the military lifestyle and, uh, and investing. So we, we also built a network. So it's kind of like a one-stop shop and just education is at our core for vets, by vets. Um, and we're just super, super passionate about it. But yeah, co-owner and now I'm the VP of education for, nice. for ADPI. Nice. And one thing that I do appreciate, and incidentally, um, a little too late uh, for, for me just because of where I'm in my career, but the network of real estate agents, you know, I mean, military moves every two to three years in, on average, I'd say. And, you know, you have to go through that, that buying or selling or finding a new place to live. But, you know, around every major base, you guys have a network of agents that you can refer people to that have been vetted and are, are solid, good people. So I, I love that. I love what you guys are doing for the, the active duty veteran community. Um, how can, if we, if we got a veteran, you know, listening or active duty listening, how, how can they find you guys? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the best way to do it, I mean, all the free resources, just go to activedutypassiveincome.com. You know, Military House Hacking is the name of our best-selling book. It's a one, number one best-selling book on Amazon. It's free. You can download it. We're coming out with a 2.0, but just go to the website. The VA loan mastery course is free. Most of us have no idea that they have a VA loan available to them that can get them into a house for 0% down not just a house, a four unit property in living in one unit for 0% down, even wrap rehab into that VA loan if you find the right lender. So there's just a, 
you don't know what you don't know. So go to ADPI, activedutypassiveincome.com. Listen to the podcast. It's free. Join the Facebook group. It's free. It's yep. just a lot of vets that are kind of crossing paths and sharing knowledge with, oh, with each other. So. I got to say, podcast episode number 150 is by far the best one ADPI has ever put out. So guy named Brian Briscoe. Really yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, amazing, right? So, but yeah. uh, anyway, yeah, I, I love what you guys are doing. Um, you know, I was... Uh, Anyway, we won't go into that too much more because yeah. we want to talk more about you and your background. So let's yeah. let's uh, just slightly shift gears and tell us about you. Yeah, uh, I mean, Brian, you, you kind of nailed the, the high points. I grew up in the Chicagoland area, joined the Navy when I was 21 back in 2005. And, um, you know, just been traveling the world and deploying and just, you know, uh, meeting amazing people. And I just rapidly went through the ranks, but I never really was comfortable and, and I never really enjoyed it. And I was never really, you know, I never found fulfillment in, in what I was doing. I knew there was more. And mm-hmm. I was always trying to figure out ways to, you know, create a side hustle or do something. And then on a deployment in 2014, um, you know, I read a stack of books about building wealth and I just kept seeing the real estate come up as a topic that anybody can get into. And you don't need a whole lot of credit. You need knowledge and hustle. I'm like, I got all that. Right. So yeah. I could just learn. I dove into the education when I got off that deployment. Um, you know, I, I paid a lot of money for education and coaching to the rich dad organization mm-hmm. and, uh, it got me to where I am today. So there's no complaints. Um, you know, and then I, I, I couldn't really get traction because I was learning too much about all things, real estate, the wholesaling, the flipping single family, multifamily, commercial mobile home parks. And then I never really picked one. And, and then when I chose one that was large multifamily and mobile home parks, and I honed in and focused, that's when I started getting traction. And while I was active duty, you know, I own controller helped close over 1200 doors, mm-hmm. which is why I was one of the reasons why I was able to get out, um, you know, at 15 years as a senior enlisted leader, most people that, you know, my, my, my chiefs in, in the mess and my leaders look at me like I had two heads, like, yeah, the heck are you getting out 15, right. Cause they, they don't understand the hustle. They don't understand. I was building this empire for the last four or five years to set myself up. And I had an option to get out and I wanted to, I wasn't passionate about what I was doing in the Navy but I'm passionate about, you know, yeah. investing, building assets and then sharing the value and helping other military members achieve their financial freedom yeah, goals. That's, yeah. that's almost unheard of. I mean, it really is. I mean, every, everybody has a line in the sand, you know, and my, my line in the sand was 12 years. You know, as soon as I got to that 12 year mark, Marine Corps put just the right carrot in front of me. And I'm like, all right, you know, and you know, if, if anybody listening doesn't know how it works, you have zero pension, zero retirement until 19 years, 364 days. And then at that 20 year mark, all of a sudden you get a pension. So people, people very rarely get out of the military at their 15 year mark. But, uh, you know, I mean, if, if, if four Oaks was where it was now, when I was at my 15 year mark, I would have pulled the cord too. I would, I would have popped out and been, been very happy and zero regrets. But, uh, um, end of the day, I, I started a little late. My my deployment, where I read through the stack of books about every real estate, you know, th- theory ever, was 2016-17. So, and it was uh, on the USS Macon Island. So, you know, yeah. go Navy, I guess, right? But that's uh, right. And I'm, dude, I mean, I have to say, you know, the, the reason why you say, hey, if I were in, you know, at 15 years where Four Oaks is now, I would have got out, is because you understand time and yes. the value of time and the fact that more money is going to give you options and freedom and that gives you more time right and time is really the only thing that most people are not cherishing that i believe is the, like the most incredibly um safe a sacred asset is, is our time one thing we can't get back and you understand that and the most successful yeah. people on our planet are best managers of their time and they respect each other's time and they respect their own time. Um, and that's because that's why they get to where they're at because yeah. they understand the value of time. And, and then, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're, you're giving up. I mean, a lot of people will focus on that, that pension and the money and, and look at giving that up. But quite frankly, in, in five years, knowing what I know now, I can create more passive income than that pension's ever going to give me. You know, so one I of think- my four, one of my four plexes is literally not only popping off more income gross, every month that I would get as a pension by saving for 20, mm-hmm. but it's appreciating every single year and I get tax benefits and I am like, I'm able to leverage other people's money to, to buy it. Like, yeah. you know, so it just, that didn't make sense to me to spend another five years. And my wife and I, we don't have kids yet. We're about to start having kids. Mm-hmm. I don't want to, you know, get her pregnant and then say, Hey babe, I got to go leave for nine months, you know, yeah. and you know, you handle business. I just want to put her in that situation, man. And I, yeah. you know, luckily I, I had options. So, and, and quite frankly, I've done that one too many times, you know, I, yeah. I came into the Marine Corps with two kids and you know, it, uh, 
very, very, a very low moment. You know, everybody has, you know, I'm not saying my rock bottom was dramatic or anything, but uh, you know, for, for me, the I guess what what was closest to rock bottom happened on a ship on somebody's birthday. You know, in the middle of uh, you know one big body of water. I don't remember where it was exactly, but uh, yeah, I mean, putting your family through that every time you deploy and knowing that the Navy, Marine Corps, Jordan's an Air Force vet. I'm sure the Air Force is the same way. They can tell you, hey, you're deploying tomorrow. Grab your bags. But uh, yeah, so cool, man. Uh, so. I mean, we talked a little bit, let's, let's distill your, your big burning. Why, you know, what's, what's the reason. So if you could distill it down to a couple of sentences, what is it? Yeah. You know, obviously it's, it's different for everybody, but personally um, it was because, you know, of the fact that I know um, I have the ability to provide an incredible life mm -hmm. for my family their family, my ge generations for the next couple hundred years. I, one person, the decisions that I make today could literally change the family tree for the next couple hundred years in my family tree. And so that, I, obviously it's, you know, did not have a financial education until I ground uh, grinded through it. And I'm just regular middle-class family. You know, my parents mm -hmm. separated when, when I was like eight. So single mother raising three kids, put us all through college. And then, you know, because she pinched penny. So I got like a little bit of financial education from her, but the biggest why for me is that I know I can. And if I don't, that's that me, that's, that's selfish. Mm -hmm. And I know I don't even have kids yet. The minute I have kids, I'm going to have a tangible why yeah. my a son or a daughter will be a tangible why that I see every day. I look at pictures of them. I'm just going to continue going. But because I know the more I grind, the more free time I have and I can spend with them. And real estate beautifully could, could offer that. And I'm, a, I'm living proof because I somehow became a millionaire in the military and I knew nothing from the very beginning, no, wasn't able to figure anything out. And then I had some education, had some epiphanies. And this dude, freaking simpleton from outside of Chicago, was able to become a millionaire you know, in the military and leave at, at 15 because I have multiple streams of revenue from real estate and from businesses. And I'm not special. Anybody could do it. Yeah. Um, I know that's a long, long, long why. And uh, seriously, obviously, I'm passionate about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but my why is, is because I know I, I could be the one to completely change. And I have to do that. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I mean, the military is not Microsoft, you know, it doesn't make millionaires very frequently, you know, so um, I, I would say you, you, you became a millionaire in spite of the military, not, uh, you know, I don't think there was, um, you know, you, you obviously don't get paid a lot, you know, as, as a military member, but uh, the skills, the characters, we can go on for oh, yeah. days and days, how intangible. If it makes you, if the, the military will make you or break you. If you, mm -hmm. you're the type of person that it makes you, like people who stay in and, you know, for probably more than eight, nine, 10 years, and you continue growing and going up the ranks and everything like that, if, the, if that's you, you're designed to run a business. Mm -hmm. You are the, like the, your, your character traits, your work ethic, your diligence, your resilience, your teamwork, your leadership, all these things that we have to like harness in the military and are embedded in our DNA transition very well in, yeah. in the military um and or in business yeah. as well so you know for for those of you that are listening man take advantage of that because a lot of people think the military is like holding them back if you're in the military leverage that and and be you know grow as much as you can and then in business you're just going to do that much better yeah absolutely absolutely so let, let's shift gears one more time here let's talk about uh some of the multifamily deals you've done pick, yeah. pick one and pick a lot just uh, give us an idea of, of what uh what tim kelly's done well I'll, I'll, I'll go with my first, uh, the first syndication that I did, um, was three and a half years ago. Uh, when I first got to Pensacola, I bought a fourplex the month I got here using a two or three K FHA loan. And then six months later syndicated 42 units with some friends in the area that I met at the RIA and two of them were military. One of them, Jay Helms. A lot of people know Jay Helms, yep. the founder w of the capitalist. capitalist. Yep. Yeah. He's right. He's right down the street from, uh, from where I live in, in Pensacola. He's in Gulf breeze and hmm. him and I linked up, we found the deal and we just went full cycle with it. Um, we sold it and, uh, back in November and it was, it was just an amazing, it was an amazing journey, but it was a lot of, a lot of lessons learned, a lot of rough patches. So hmm. I, I mean, um, I, don't, I don't know how deep you want me to dive. So ask me a couple questions about yeah, that deal and then let's, you know, I'll dive in. So most people who listen to the podcast are trying to get their first deal under their belt. So what was, what was the biggest challenge getting it under contract and getting it closed from your perspective? Um, all of that was, was mindset. And for me, that's why I'm just so passionate about mindset. Like I, I knew I had the education. I read the books. I paid for the education. I was in the right circles. Mm -hmm. I was going to the meetups. Like, 
And I'm, I just had to learn because I, it's the success triangle, ADPI, you know, the learn, network, take action. You do those three things every single day. There's going to be success eventually. Like yeah. it's going to happen. So I already was learning and I was networking because I was at the meals, but I wasn't intentional. I didn't have that concise um, criteria down for who I was, who, what I was looking for, what I could provide to others. Right. As soon as I nailed down like that elevator pitch or elevator hook, and I was able to say, this is who I am. This is what I do. This is what I could offer you. And this is what I'm looking for. And as soon as I was able to get that, I mean, that's when brokers started taking me seriously and investors started taking me seriously and potential partners started me taking me seriously at these meetups and stuff. Yeah. So then I was very intentional with, we're specifically looking for multifamily deal. Like we are multifamily investors, blah, blah, blah. So I had a really refined elevator pitch. Um, and then I was able to find that deal in the, in the, through a broker relationship from our local RIA, mm -hmm. uh, me and Jay found that deal and we pr proved to him that we were, had the knowledge and capacity to close, even though we had, didn't have any deals done. And then, um, and then we, we ended up connecting with the money in our RIA partnered mm -hmm. with a couple other guys who had, had more, um, more knowledge and experience. And then it, again, but I say mindset, because I think anybody could work through that. It's just convincing yourself that you can. Yeah. convincing yourself that you actually are good enough to own a large commercial multifamily property. I think 100% that's the biggest thing that will hold people back is their mindset. Their yeah. self-doubt, their self-doubt, um, negative self-belief, negative self-talk. It's because of our culture and our society. Mm -hmm. It's not because of you. We're growing up in a negative culture, a scarcity mindset of culture. So you have to be different. You have to, when the masses are going this way, you're probably going to want to go that way. Yeah. And so uh, I think the mindset thing, the more I grew as a person and I was like practicing meditation and journaling and studying what the most successful people were doing in the morning routine and then in the, what were they investing in? How are they managing their time? I just started emulating it. So you have to continue growing it and be a student of life and be a student of, of self-development while you're being a student of, of, of being a real estate investor as you grow. And the more you grow in both those avenues, the more value you could deliver and the more you receive in abundance. Yeah. You know, a lot, lot of golden nuggets there. I mean, looking back at my trajectory, my mindset held me back, you know, for the longest time. You know, I, I read Rich Dad Poor Dad once a long time ago, and he talks about commercial real estate. And I'm like, I can't do that. You know, 100% mindset. You know, I can't do that. Yeah. And when I started getting- like, you didn't have a reason. You just, I, I can't do that. I can't. Because you didn't know how. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> right. it, was, it was basically the, the thought that I had is I don't even know where to start, you know, so I can't do that, you know, and- you know, several years later, when I decided to do multifamily, it's like I was chasing fourplexes and sixplexes, you know, and it wasn't, it wasn't until I had a couple of fundamental mindset shifts that I could actually, I actually had the, I mean, confidence comes along with it once. And I think you're absolutely right. Once your mind opens up to the ideas, you can get there, you know, but if, if your mind doesn't open up the ideas, I mean, it's, it's not even, not even possible. So, yeah, my, my partner, Adam says, has one of the most simple quotes and it's just so strong. Adam Labar, the other co-founder of, of uh, the multifamily mastermind stuff, this dude, and this dude, his first deal, he, he was stationed in Japan, still active duty. He bought a 62 unit apartment complex from Japan in Knoxville, Tennessee with some partners mm -hmm. as his very first deal. So if you are making excuses right now, think about what Adam did and he's raising a family in Japan as a special agent in the air force trying to figure that out. Right. And now his very first deal was across the world. So he said, um, with education comes confidence, right. Or with education comes, um, um, comes confidence with confidence comes success. And, and the more confidence you have, you're going to be able to go in there, but you're going to, you're going to need to educate yourself, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and that building that mindset on top of educating yourself is just totally just going to give you that ability to just believe in yourself. Like you can, then you have to start seeing it and then you can be able to go talk to brokers and have that conversation because you don't already know how to talk about NOI and debt service and, you know, debt service coverage ratio and how to raise capital and value. Like there's, these are these fundamentals that anybody could learn, but it's yeah. the mindset that holds so many people back. And that's why I'm such an advocate for taking time every single day to grow and to be quiet and be present and just think and visualize success, you know? Yeah. So, so speaking of speaking and visualize success, you know, what are you visualizing as your next steps? What's next for you? Yeah, man. Um, so active duty passive income is where I'm spending like 80% of my time just just growing and putting so much sweat and blood and tears and just energy into just creating the best products and services and, and support and, and I'm becoming a certified high performance coach to better understand and dig deeper and help my, our, all of our members at a different level. 
Um, but just growing that mastermind, creating another next tier level in, in the mastermind where we're offering more of our one-on-one -on -one time to our members who want to join or who qualify to join that top tier. Like, I think we're going to call it like the wardroom or the XO something. We're going to do some corny, some corny instead of like, you know, iron council. So that, and then, you know, building, um, continuing to, to buy assets, you know, in the background, the asset column has to continue to be stacked. And uh, we're, we're all, we're, we're going hard in apartment complexes and mobile home parks. Uh, we're getting a lot of deal flow, but we're spending so much time on building the community and, but we have to continue to build assets and buy assets. So not only could we obviously continue to build our empires and this is what we're, we're promoting and advocating mm -hmm. for, but to show all of our members, like, look, this is what we're doing. This is how it's done. This is how we find the deal. This is how we raise capital. Um, so that's kind of where I'm that's at, it. but there's a lot of other things personally and professionally, but for business and real estate mm -hmm. stuff, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Yeah. You know, and I know a lot of guys that are in your program, um, you guys started a little bit too late. And when you started the multifamily mastermind, multifamily course, you were, you were a little too late for me. I'd already, uh, dove in with someone else, but, uh, you know, a lot of good people. You were and, a rapid deploy member, man. I, I mean, was, yeah. You I was, were one of the, I was one of the first. Yeah. yeah. I was. But, I mean, no, the rapid deploy is the infancy of now what is yep. the multifamily mastermind. So you were one yeah. of the plank owners, bro. I, I was, I was. And when you came out with the full course, you know, I, I'd already uh, put 25,000 to somebody else. And, uh, you know, I, I, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't justify it. I'm like, it's, it's probably going to be the same material, just different people. And, yeah. you know, had, had you guys come out with that course, you know, six months earlier, you know, it'd, it'd be Brian Briscoe, the, the ADPI graduate, you know, so, but, uh, uh, anyway, love Dude, what you, you know, guys do. Say that. I just, I just, yeah, I just talked yeah. about Adam. Me and Adam, mm -hmm. we, what, when you were like, when that, when you chose the other education, and we yep. released that during that time. Adam was in Japan, mm -hmm. and him and I, from 14 hours ahead, we were building it during that time. Somehow yeah. syncing up, doing module, recording modules in a 14-hour time difference. So that was yeah. fun. But yep. yeah, yeah. Adam's a good dude. He lives not too far from me. We actually had lunch together uh, with a bunch of other people, yeah. you know, last month, but uh, yeah. all right. So let's, yeah. uh, you know, another, another quick guy uh, shifting gears. We're going to bring Jordan on the line with us. Uh, just real quick about Jordan. He's an air traffic control, uh, air traffic controller with the federal aviation administration. Uh, he's uh, also an air force veteran um, and a formally certified commercial pilot. Uh, also flew C-130s for the Air Force, like I said, which included a deployment to Afghanistan. Um, he is now linked up with business partner, Brad Smith, founded LiftBridge Capital con to continue the joint real estate venture together. Um, so that said, Jordan, welcome to the show. Hey guys, thanks for having me. I've been really looking forward to this. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, great to have you on. Great to, you know, uh, be able to talk with you. Um, I know we've exchanged, you know, emails and texts a little bit, but uh, good to see each other, you know. In yeah, air quotes awesome. face to face, right? But uh, right. Um, so let's do this. Let's talk about you. What uh, what can you tell us about you, your background, and your history? Um, well, you hit on some of the points. You know, I after uh, high school, I went to college partway through, joined the Air Force. Um, I sadly, I have to correct you a little. I was I was a C one thirty crew chief. I wish I was a C one thirty pilot, but I hadn't oh. made it yet. So. I don't okay. want you to bust me later for that. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, you know, I, yeah. I read through that quickly, and uh, oh, you know. Yeah, C-130, you know, you might as well I fly it, right? I loved my time there uh, in, in Afghanistan, even it was, as you guys know, I don't know if you felt this way, but I felt like we were finally doing something that we'd trained for. You know, it sounds corny, but it's like you do all the mop trails a hundred times, but when you're actually loading legit stuff into the back of an airplane, it feels like you're doing something. So yeah. I love that. Um, yeah, that it led me to the commercial pilot Um job i was trying to get a job with airlines that was in 2009 I had just gotten married economy was toy you know tanking mm -hmm. airlines were laying people off so I had to pivot a little and then that's what led me to the air traffic control mm -hmm. um, which has been great uh, i'm happy that that worked out that way it's been good fit for my family i like the job um and that's what led me here to colorado nice so. Yeah. And, and talking about, you know, the deployment, it, it's, it's almost like, you know, being on a football team, you know, and you just want to get in and play, you know? So when, when, when you're deployed, when you're in Afghanistan, Iraq or Middle East or whatever country you're, you're deploying to um, when you're not deployed, it's almost like you're sitting on the bench, you know, waving your hand in the air saying, put me in coach. Right. I mean, yeah. but uh, yeah, hundred uh, percent agree with that. I mean, obviously deployments take tolls on families, but uh you know, end of the day, that's, that's why the military exists. So, um, but that said, thanks for your service and, and, and all that you do. And, um, 
But uh, so, yeah, so you're Denver now, Federal Aviation or FAA, Air Traffic Controller. I hear that's one of the most stressful jobs there is. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, that's what everybody says. I, it has its moments for sure. You know, mm-hmm. when weather comes in or some strange situation happens or those are the times mm-hmm. like a firefighter, that's what they get paid for those moments, you know, the mm-hmm. uh, other moments, not so bad. I, I don't know. I say a lot of jobs are stressful. It's just how you manage it, but mm-hmm. it's, it's challenging enough to, uh, but I enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. I know I I've worked with air traffic controllers, you know, in, in the military quite frequently. And I know there, there's a whole specific set of rules for the FAA controllers to follow just to, you know, and, and unfortunately just like the aviation community, those, those rules are literally written in blood. They're, they're almost always written because, you know, an airplane crashed or somebody died because, you know, and then in the investigation follow-up is like, Hey, we're going to come up with this rule to prevent this from happening again. But, uh, Anyway, um, so so let's, uh, you know, talk about something a little more exciting, you know, than, you know, FAA and, and stuff. How about uh, multifamily? What, uh, what got you to pursue apartment investing? Well, I started with real estate just like anybody, you know, my first house that my wife and I bought early in our marriage. Uh, mm-hmm. We came time to sell. Our family was growing and we decided to keep it as an investment property and mm-hmm. instead of selling. So We've been self-managing that since, uh, which has been a great experience. We've been able to learn, you know, some of the ins and outs of that mm-hmm. on a smaller scale, but it's been good. Uh, and it, honestly, it started off just like a, a way to supplement income. I never thought I would be a quote unquote real estate investor, right? Mm-hmm. I just was trying to supplement my income. But then like a lot of people's situation, it kind of piqued my interest. And uh, at the same time, my friend that you mentioned, Brad Smith, now my business partner, he was kind of doing the same, but he flipped a couple of the houses that he and his family had lived in, like a house hack kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then we both kind of mutually came to that point where we wanted, we realized, you know, there's something to this. We want to take another step, do something. And so we came together and uh, actually bought a cabin uh, in the Smoky Mountains and we're running mm-hmm. it right now in the short-term vacation rental market. Nice, nice. Um, so that was that's been fun and exciting. It's new things that we both had to learn, but uh, and also good for our partnership because we're able to f- find you know the things that I was good at, things that he was good at, mm-hmm. things that we can be more efficient uh, yeah. by splitting up the work. Yeah, um, de- definitely a little test drive before you get into the, the bigger stuff. It was, and yeah. honestly, that was the beginning. The the bigger stuff wasn't even on the radar originally. We were thinking of just trying to scale that into a larger supplemental income uh, Mm -hmm. situation. Um, But for a number of factors, we realized that growth is kind of of limited. Mm -hmm. Started doing some more research. And eventually, yeah, that led us to uh, multifamily apartments and believing that that's the most powerful avenue for our end goal here. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Now you talked, you talked a little bit, you you kind of wove, you know, this why in and out of uh, of the narrative. Uh, But if you could distill your why down to a couple of sentences, what would it be? Uh, Well, similar kind of what Tim had mentioned earlier about time, but uh, it's kind of twofold for me. Number Mm -hmm. one family, it's uh, not uncommon, but as much as I love my job, like the military, you guys know, it's a 24 seven situation, Mm -hmm. you know, weekends, holidays, nights yep. uh the vacation rules are strict and i've got two young sons now um so looking to yeah yeah very similar to what tim was saying looking to be able to do something that's gonna pave a way for me to be a part of their life as much as possible and create a life for them in the future awesome and then just another follow-up uh, i guess also the second factor was just frustration with the status quo investment options out there. You know, mm-hmm. everything's rooted to the stock market and 401ks, mutual funds, they have their own pitfalls. And I witnessed it myself. I watched guys retire in the midst of these last two recessions that, you know, have worked through and by no fault of their own, they'd worked their whole life. And then right before they retire, there's a recession and their, yeah. their nest egg dries up. basket of eggs. Yes. So, mm-hmm. I want to avoid that and uh, at least diversify a little. I, like I said, I think multifamily is the way to yeah. do it. Yeah, I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. All right, here comes my favorite part of every podcast. Jordan, we got Tim on the line here. What do you want to ask him? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I mean, I feel like we could do this for two hours, but uh, try to pick a couple of things that uh, 
might be able to learn from you. First of all, I was just wanted to ask you about capital raising in general. It's kind of a two part thing, but uh, are there situations that you've been in? I'm sure there have, and what techniques might you be able to share? You speaking with somebody who's interested, you're syndicating a deal, um, pitching it to them, but it seems like they they need something extra to commit, like a hook or a, I don't mean like a secret, but it, is there something that you have found effective with people that definitely sound interested, they have the means, but they just aren't totally there? Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, I'm, I'm glad you're bringing, first of all, raising capital up is definitely one of my strengths. Um, and what, uh, you know, all the roles you could play as a GP, one of the things I mostly bring to the table, um, in addition, really just on the acquisition side, but raising capital, Dude, it's all mindset. It really is all mindset. And the reason why I'm saying that is because, um, first of all, you have to go at it like you're not asking for money, right? That you're definitely not looking for money. You're not asking for money. You are actually searching for the investors who will understand this amazing opportunity to invest that you're offering. So if you go at it like, look, I have this amazing opportunity for you let me explain to you exactly what's in it for you, you know, but like before that, before you even pitch it to them, you need to dig into their background in real estate and what their goals are, because if their goals aren't specifically to invest in the deal that you have that you're offering, why would you even waste time and talk to them? Mm -hmm. Right. So understanding the investor before you even have this phone call, you're going to eliminate 70% of them, right? Then the people that you actually have those conversations with, you get to know them, you understand their goals. Let's say, hey, look, hey, I'm actually looking to invest in blah, 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 whatever that asset class is, whatever the opportunity you're investing. And then you, then you simply just explain it to them, simplify it as long as you're Barney style breaking it down Barney style so a five-year-old can understand. You give me 50K, you give me 100K, this is exactly what's in it for you. You're going to receive quarterly distributions. You'll have monthly emails with updates and you're going to get a return, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, plus tax benefits and you'll receive a K1 to help you reduce it. Like, so you have to walk them through like you're educating a five-year-old on, on this. And a lot of times that's what you're doing. You're educating them. So then they understand, you know what you're talking about because the minute you, they realize that you know more than they do, they'll probably start figuring out if you're ethical, if you're moral, and then they're going to just trust you. Cause a lot of times they're, they're investing in you more than they're investing in the deal. Um, so Right. And to answer your point more precisely or your question more precisely, if they say, uh, if you can't tell uh, what it is, there's no secret, just ask. What is your interest level on a one to 10 scale right now today? One of the best questions you could ask before you get off the phone, because then you're not le you know, left wondering what the heck, how interested are they, right? Hey, you know, you've already given everything that's, oh yeah, this is pretty cool. I'm pretty interested. Well, well, give me an idea, you know, on a scale from one to 10, what is your interest level? And just shut up and listen. Mm -hmm. And then if they say five or less, then okay, no problem. Well, what will it take you to get to a 10? And then at that point, if they're five or less, they're probably gonna be like, no, nah, probably not a whole lot. I just don't even have the money. I don't even know what I'm talking to you right now. Right. <laughs> but like, if they're like eight, nine, 10, if they're eight or nine, what will it take to get to a 10? Well, Maybe I need a little bit more clarification on this. Maybe I need a little bit more clarification on that. And then, hey, okay, let me br break that down to you a little bit more. I'm sorry if I didn't, you know, clarify that. Here, check it out. Boom, 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 boom. And then you walk them through it. What will it, what is your interest level? What will it take to get to a 10? If they're a 10 out of 10, excellent. I'm going to send you wiring instructions today because that's the real decision point where half your investors are going to back out. When you actually give them wiring instructions and they are asked, and you give them a deadline to wire, um, I would say only about half of them will actually invest. And I'm, I'm sure Brian can attest to that. Yeah. But what is the scale one to 10? What is your interest level? What will it take to get to a 10? And then you can't get off the phone without asking how much are you, um, how much are you comfortable investing today? Like a dollar amount. You have to know, are, do they even have 25K or 50K or whatever your minimum is, right? Yeah. And so then you'll be able to know that. And while you're listening to all this, you're documenting everything. You are documenting everything because you're building your investor database. Right. Every single name, email, last name, phone number. The last time you talked, are they an accredited investor, a sophisticated investor? What is their interest level? Okay, then you know you focus more time on the eight, nines, and tens, and you right. immediately, 48 hours later, will will follow up. You have It's all about the follow-up. Sometimes they're going to say, no, no, no. All right, fine. Like, no, 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 no. Okay, like the same person. 
you just got to follow up with them and be persistent and be annoying, like reach out to them more than you want. And if they, until they tell you to stop, right. Or until they answer your questions, what is your interest level? Mm-hmm. What will it take to get to a 10? How much are you comfortable investing? You don't get off the phone with them until you have all three of those questions answered. Yeah. I think that's like good, that. good, solid advice. Uh, you know, one, one thing that uh, we try to do is get them to say yes several times you know, and with less and less, I mean, the first yes is always with no pressure, you know, does this sound like something you'd like to do? And, you know, if you can get a soft commit with no real deal, and a lot of people will pitch a sample deal package or something like that for you to use. If you can get them to say yes, without a real deal in front of them with no pressure, you're much more likely to get another series of yeses. And typically by the time we hand out wiring instructions, we're, we're, at, we're probably over a 90% close rate at that point, you know, but, uh, um, and that's, that's just going through the yes, but I, I, a lot of, a lot of gold nuggets there. Good, good, solid answer there. Um, what do you got, what do you got yeah. next, Jordan? And just really yeah. like, oh, sorry, the other, the other thing I just wanted to mention too, was you have to understand who, what investor are you talking to? Are you talking to the left brain investor or the right brain investor? The more analytical, I already know you're more analytical mm-hmm. than, than for sure than I am, but I would say you're more left brain Jordan than average. Like you're predominantly analytical data driven numbers. I assume um, if more, more so than the right brain, like, like me, the, the sales promote visionary, you know, I'm a musician and I love music and, and uh, I, I'd rather have that, that, well, well, what's in it for me? What, how is this going to improve my life? But the left brain investor needs to know the numbers, the data, the, 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 the demographic research, and maybe how many, uh, the data of the, of the bio for each GP. And they're going to more do probably do more vetting of the, of the GP team. Um, so, and you got to understand your, yourself too. Uh, if you're raising capital for, for a deal that's just on your own residential, cool. But that's the beauty of the large scalable multifamily. If you really don't feel like learning how to raise capital, it's probably not for you, right? It's probably for somebody else. You got to find that partner that has that capital raising expertise. So, and, and you might be an amazing capital raiser. You won't really know until you go try and listen to the advice Brian's given you and read a couple books on it and hone your education focus that you allot, you allot X amount of time per day on, on education hone that focus on how can I learn to raise more capital? How can I learn to raise more capital? Um, I could even give you the raise, the raising capital module in our, in our multifamily Academy for free, man. Hit, hit me up after this. I'll just give that to you. And it like, I walk you through my elevator pitch. I walk you through all this kind of mindset stuff that, um, and same with Adam, me and Adam Labar teach it and he throws in a lot of nuggets too. So, uh, but yeah, man, any follow-up stuff to that? I mean, hopefully that helped. No, it was very helpful. Yeah, I appreciate that. One quick follow-up is uh, once you get past the initial fan, friends and family kind of investing, that's kind of where we are, uh, Brad and I. What kind of realms have you taken and other than them recommending the next guy? Uh, have you fenced another good avenue? So um, actually, let, let's go back. Is So is Brad, are you guys kind of, how how clean is your partnership agreement? Do you have roles and responsibilities divided up yet? Who's going to do what? Are you kind of just figuring it out along the way? Well, it started that way, but it's much more defined now. Yes. Uh, as far as the capital raising though, uh, because we're new, as far as the contact list, that's kind of something that we're both yeah. doing at the same time. Uh, so yeah. You're trying to figure out maybe yeah, who's yeah. stronger or if you could both yeah. do it. Yeah. And we have separate so do you think avenues we can pursue individually, you know? So do you think his personality is more right brain like that would be able to sell, pitch, kind of talk to people or is he more left brain kind of analytical like you? Uh, I'm going to say both. He, uh, he used to sell Cutco knives. So, I mean, he's got that kind of, <laughs> you know. That's awesome. Dude, yeah. the guy that I just sat and, sat and had lunch with just said, yeah, uh, my son's becoming a real estate agent. It's cool. He's got sales experience. He was selling Cutco knives okay. for a while. I was just like. <laughs> No, not a lot of millionaires from that, but I, I don't know. I think he's comfortable in that, but he's also, I mean, he's a construction manager in the project um, commercial world. So he deals with a lot of numbers as well. So hey man, um, a lot of high level CEOs are like a very clean mix of left brain, right brain. They really yeah. are. So, um, so I, I just wanted to answer, get, just to make sure I had that track. And so the question was when you're, when you're going from, from like 506 B, you know, sophisticated friends and family to 506 C, what was the actual question when, well, it could still be 506B, maybe not pitching a specific deal, but uh, like LinkedIn or other avenues other than friends and family. Are you meeting other like your, your personal, your, your personal, Rios. your close personal network? You know, what happens yeah. when that well dries up? Right. Oh, OK. Like where, where, where could you find more accredited investors, basically? Yeah. 
Sure. Uh, okay. So, I mean, if you're, if you're using, if you're talking about social media, that, that's a, that's a whole can of worms that we could talk about. Brian's really good at this. There's a lot of people in the space who understand the power of social media and LinkedIn is probably the best um, for this business, right? Facebook is, it's, it's fine, like, you know, but the Facebook groups is where you're going to be networking and, and find the right people. You have to put yourself in the right environments like the LinkedIn, but then you have to be persistent and consistent. Like Brian is constantly, he's consistently on there adding value, engaging with people. And so that's how people know who Brian is because it's a little bit about what you know. It's, it's a, more about who you know, but it's most about who knows, who knows you, Jordan. Yeah. And so until you get people to know you, until you're able to get out there and share your story with people, you're, you're guaranteed you have not exhausted your, your first degree network yet because guaranteed most of them don't even know that you're in real estate. Could you, could you, could, could, unless, please correct me if I'm wrong, but are you the type of person that's already been on social media and letting people know like what you're up to and I'm in real estate, I'm doing this, this is what I could add value in and this is what I'm looking for. Like, do you have some kind of regimen like that yet? Well, no, uh, you're right. I mean, that first round is definitely not exhausted yet. Um, I'm just thinking ahead, but yeah, you're, yeah. I, I'm hoping that that will lead to, you know, relationships, which will lead to a, a recommendation relationship, you know? Yeah. Hey, I mean, honestly, you haven't exhausted your first degree network unless you, until you scroll through every single contact in your phone and you call, if you don't even remember who it is, call me like, Hey, Hey, this is Jordan. I had you on my phone. I, I can't remember how we connected, but I just wanted to share something exciting with you. Yeah. Do that with every, every single person in your contact list, guaranteed you raise millions of dollars. Yeah. Some, something, go ahead. I was going to say something I had to overcome is I started reaching out to those first degree people and I'd, I'd say, Hey, I'm getting into multifamily and blah, blah, blah. And the question that I most often got from the other person is, aren't you still in the Marine Corps or wait, 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 you can still do that while active duty. You know, I, I mean, that was literally the question I got more often than anything else. And so I started looking to change people's mind about who Brian Briscoe was. And that's where I started the social media campaign. It was just, I want everybody to know that I am also, I'm still active duty Marine, but I am also a real estate guy. I am also a guy that they can turn to for multifamily investments, you know, and a lot of people that I know from, I mean, we're, we're all three of us are military. We know how that works. You know, you're, you're with somebody for, you know, a year, year and a half, they get transferred, you get transferred, you know, you don't see them for several years, but the social media campaign, just putting that out there on social media, I've got people I haven't seen in years because, you know, we were together in San Diego or we were, we were stationed together at uh, at cherry point that are coming out of the woodwork and saying, I want to invest with you. So, you know, it's, it's social media is a powerful tool. It's not the only way to do it, but I, I think at some point you need to, you need to make sure people know that you're not Jordan, the FAA air traffic controller at the FAA. You know, you're not just Jordan. You are also Jordan, the multifamily investor. And once they understand that it's going to be a lot easier uh, to raise capital. And as far as the mindset goes, once your mindset changes to Jordan, the real estate investor, it's going to be a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. Th that transition, I believe is actually in progress. I mean, I, yeah. it's amazing how only a couple of years ago, it wasn't a thought in my mind, but. Uh, All right, Jordan, give me in, in 15 to 20 seconds. What is your elevator pitch? If like a random investor or a broker was, you know, sitting right next to you at a conference or whatever. Hey, Jordan, who are you? What is your story? Oh boy. Well, uh, I would tell him that, like I said, I've been frustrated with uh, the status quo investments and I've been looking for something better for my family. And I'm, that led me to multifamily real estate, which I think is the most powerful option out there. And uh, it has the benefits that, like you mentioned, tax benefits that are shared amongst all events, all investors, reliable returns, um, and uh, an actual physical asset that uh, that the investor gets to be an owner in. Why, why should I, I mean, why should I invest with you? I know a lot of syndicators. Why should I give my money to you? Well, it's not just me. It, we built a team um, of people with experience in different realms of multifamily real estate, and uh, we're 100 percent committed in moving forward with it. I think, dude, you're right on the right track, but there's no conviction, man. There's no you're 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 not confident enough and uh, to at the, uh, yet. And I think th this is really where the issue is. The coolest part is that all you got to do is brush up on that 
literally write out a 15 to 20 second elevator pitch and say it a thousand times over and over. And, and for me, it's like, you, you sounded like you were trying, you're like, you're really frustrated and you're trying to do something. And like, that's what it sounds like. You have to, you have to convince yourself that you are a multifamily investor and that you plan on closing X amount of deals within the next 12 months. If you don't believe that, you're not going to be able to convey that to your investors. Until you believe, deep down believe, I have that visualization, I, I will be closing, you know, at least one deal. And that's, you have to have the conviction. And then when you say, my partners and I invest in and syndicate real estate in the affordable and workforce housing spaces. We focus on apartment communities and mobile home communities. And we're always looking for partners. And we're always looking for investors to offer double digit returns to and tax benefits and ownership through K-1s. So I'm always looking for partners and I'm always looking for deals. How could we collaborate? And I, I just, I, I wrote that down and that's what, you know, is in, is in the, the raising capital module and you just have that steal it word for word if you want, but like be more precise. And that right there is your hook. When someone's actually interested, that right there is going to be the hook to allow them to want to be sit down with you and have a conversation to learn your entire business model. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, dude. So you have to be more confident. I am a multifamily investor. We will like, we will, we plan on closing a deal within the next six months. It's whether or not you want to be a part of it. It's kind of like the vibe you're given. Like I'm offering you an opportunity. And if you don't want it, cool. I need a lot of no's to find the yes. You're not saying these things, but you have to come at it. Like, look, I'm offering you this amazing opportunity. We only got a couple spots left. Minimum investment is this, but you don't even want to pitch it until you get to figure out what their goals are. And literally, man, the best thing you could do is not even worry about the deal, not even worry about what you're offering them until you pre-qualify them using the Ford acronym and getting to know them using family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. If you don't know those things about a person, you shouldn't even introduce the deal to them yet. And then if they didn't even mention real estate and say, hey, well, tell me more about your specific real estate goals. And then just shut up and listen. And they might say, yeah, all I'm really looking forward right now is maybe an RV portfolio, or I'm looking to invest in a, a single family home portfolio. And if that's not what you're, oh, okay, have you ever considered investing in this asset class? Then that might be, you know, but if that, if they're stuck on these asset classes, confirm it and then say, hey, no problem. I'm going to keep you in my database. I'm going to continue sending you deals. I'm going to continue presenting you opportunities because all that value that you deliver to them might change their mind and want, you know, be more interested in you and stuff. Um, I know I kind of went on and rambled on a lot, but no, I, yeah. I'll be re-watching this later to get it all. So I appreciate that. Good. Uh, I, let me ask you a question about the middle kind of part. Um, can you share maybe a couple of surprises or uh, something that you had to overcome that was different than your initial business plan and executing of after you purchased the building and how it ended up going? Yeah, I mean, this is something, I mean, I just, did a whole presentation on the, the full cycle deal um, breakdown that I did last on this. Yeah. Last night with at the, my mastermind, we, we, I had one of my partners come in and we kind of went through the whole thing. It was a lot of struggling, uh, a lot of lessons learned, but I, the word surprises, I don't think, I know what you're asking, but I'm going to tell you right now, but I think especially three of us being in the military and experiencing what we've had to, nothing is really surprising. Everybody that experienced 2020, nothing should be surprising. <laughs> and so I wasn't really surprised by, by much, but I was, it, I was just, you know, I, I just, that, that one term for whatever reason isn't, isn't like, isn't fitting in, in what, where I'm going with this. So it's more like just lessons learned and learning really what the process is. And you're not going to learn about the whole process. And maybe you might not even learn what roles you want to bring to the table until you go through one, maybe two, maybe three deals. And you might not find the right partnership until you go through a couple <laughs> partnerships. You might not find rather the right broker unless you go through a handful of brokers. Um, but what I would have done different for this specific deal, let's just say this 42 units, um, the, the first syndication that I did that we just sold, um, we had to fire the first property manager. Um, we vetted them at hard and they were in single family and they were really good in single family. And they say, hey, you know, we, we plan on going up to multifamily and we wanna do this and wanna do that. They convinced us that they would be great, had to fire them. They, they weren't will, you know, willing to change their, their, their behavior and, and deviate from the residential mindset because it's completely different from a management perspective. Yeah. And so I had to fire them. And luckily we, our relationship that we had, we were able to replace them as a property manager, but then our GCs, we had to fire a couple of them. Like, 
you know, and it really, really hit our bottom line. So at, at one point we thought we were going to just say, let's cut our losses. You know, we'll just let our investors know that we won't be able to pay them back and, and this and that. And, and uh, then we ended up coming out of the GPs came out of the pockets to loan, you know, a couple hundred thousand into the property. And now we just sold it and gave all of our investors, you know, over a hundred percent returns and all the GPs got a very nice payday. Um, but there was a lot of lessons learned. The biggest ones were probably property management. Um, and with that, building relationships with city hall during your due diligence period, having it as a standard operating procedure, meeting the, you know, everybody from planning and zoning, the city inspector, economic development, make sure city council, make sure they all know who you are and what your plan is before you go in there and do it. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of lessons learned. So I would say, yeah, pr property management, put more effort than you want to in screening the property manager because they are the face of your asset. They are the ones that will essentially be financially responsible for your, for your asset if, when you're not there. And so um, that's, that's truly probably the two biggest things right now. All right. We're, we're about out of time. This, is, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, I got one question for each of you. Tim, you go first. How can listeners learn more about you? Yeah. Um, you know, if you're, if you're active duty, just check out activedutypassive.com. I mean, I'm, I'm always hanging out in, in the, the military mastermind Facebook group and then the big Facebook group. Um, so, you know, check us out there. You can hit me up on Facebook and then Instagram is the, at the Timothy Kelly, LinkedIn at the Timothy Kelly. Uh, and then my website is the But right. if you're listening to this and you're inspired and you want to learn, um, just shoot me a text, man. And we'll hop on a call 847-910-9161. Uh, right. Just shoot me a text. Let me know you heard me and I'll just, you know, hop on a call with you and give you a free strategy session, whatever you need. All right. And if you're listening, that's all going to go in the show notes. So, you know, tap, swipe, tap, and you'll, you'll be in contact with Tim. Jordan, same question for you. How can listeners learn more about you? Yeah. I'd love to talk with anybody who, you know, is looking for something better as far as their investment future. Um, you can email me at Jordan at liftbridgecap.com. Also go to that website, liftbridgecap.com slash report. We have a report on some of the things that we've identified, the pitfalls of multi, or uh, I'm sorry, pitfalls of uh, mutual funds and 401ks and uh, why we think this is better. So check that out, liftbridge.com or cap.com slash report. All right. Awesome. And same thing, we're going to have a link to that in the show notes. So interested in that report, you know, go ahead, go to the website, download it, check it out, see what they got to say. Um, so, hey, thanks a lot, guys, for coming on the show. I really appreciate your time. And uh, this, is, this has been a really, really good conversation. Hey, if you like that episode, make sure to subscribe. But more importantly, if you haven't joined our multifamily educational community yet, which we call a tribe of titans, you are missing out. Get 30 days free by clicking the link in the description to this episode or go to thetribeoftitans.info and we'll see you there.